All right. Performance, that'd be great. Okay, great. So we'll get started, and whoever, hopefully, I can go find a way over to Zoom. Um, not really sure why YouTube decided to put me off, but whatever. Um, so for practice this morning, you want to grab something that you can use as a block. It doesn't matter what it is, anything really. Um, but something that you could use as a strap. So, um, hand towel, uh, scarf, um, whatever, a sock, um, doesn't actually matter as either. It's just something that allow you to move your hands behind your back to grab on before you're ready to interlace. And then once you're ready to, we'll just kind of settle in and find a comfortable seat position. So whatever that might be for you today, um, that's where we're gonna go. So I'm gonna start in Sukhasana, um, but you could start anywhere. And just starting to find your breath, just kind of settling your body down, being here, being present. It's a little bit nutty, a little nutty on the end too. I'm just trying to get the tech up. So just take a few deep breaths. And then as you take a few deep breaths, just notice the bones in the body getting a little bit heavier. Allowing yourself to connect a little bit more to the earth. Keep breathing. More technology fun. Kind of like when you are running late for a class and you come running in. A little bit of that going on this morning. And as we move into our practice today, our focus um, is going to be on patterns. Those of you who practice with me often know I love patterns. Um, do a lot of work with people on patterns of the mind. And the patterns of the mind are closely linked to the patterns of the body. And so in yoga, we call this um, samskaras, and I'm just going to talk, talk about them as simply patterns. The idea is that you're trying to clear the patterns that do not serve your body and your mind away. And so whether that is relationship patterns or whether that is patterns of stress or holding in the body, maybe it's patterns of the mind, maybe it's fear. It's some other emotion that shows up for you when you don't really want it to. And so I invite you, as you move through our practice today, to just notice where the pat patterns of the mind and the patterns of the body intersect. And maybe you just get curious and notice, can you trust that as you move through the practice and you create more space and you build a solid foundation, can you allow the body to do what the body would like to do without allowing the mind to interfere in a negative way? I'm going to ask you, I'm not asking you to push yourself beyond <laughs> what you're capable of or what, you're not moving into a place where you're in pain, but just simply explore. And as you're exploring, maybe just starting to explore the breath a little. Noticing what happens when you breathe into the abdomen. Oftentimes we breathe straight out in front of us into the abdomen, the belly breath. But maybe you also breathe into the side waist or into the low back. 
And then starting to draw the breath up into the rib cage and expanding the rib cage in all directions. So imagining instead of just forward or out, 360 degrees of expansion. So the entire rib cage moves out, the entire rib cage comes back in. Can you notice as you're breathing and as you're looking to expand the body, can you notice areas that feel a little stuck? We'll take another breath or so here. And when you're ready to do so, the fingers are come down by our sides. With the left fingertips crawl away and to the right arm straight to the sky. So getting along here. So imagine that somebody's grabbing your wrist, maybe being and drawing it straight to the sky. Getting along to the right side body and then slowly let the left fingertips crawl out. But not crawling out so much that you collapse down. Continuing to press away with the left hand so that the Spine gets longer, the side body gets longer, and then see if you can breathe just into the right side body. Can you get the right rib cage to expand a little bit more? And slowly coming back through center. The same thing on the other side. So left fingertips crawl away. I'm sorry, right fingertips crawl away, left arm comes straight to the sky. Keep reaching to the sky here. Keep crawling the fingertips away. Breathing into the left side body. Maybe noticing is anything stuck. This is an area for me that on my outer hip on the left side is always kind of stuck and it's feeling a little stuck this morning. So just noticing that things again, not collapsing down, but actually pressing away with the right hand. And slowly coming back through center. Let the hands come forward. You can come over to cross legs if you're sitting in cross legged position. We can to our hands and knees in table position. Just taking a moment, we get into a relatively traditional position with the shoulders stacked over the wrists, hips over the knees, and then we'll inhale as the belly drops down, the tail lifts, and the heart comes forward. And then exhale, press into the hands and round, draw the navel towards the spine, and bring the gaze towards the knees. Inhale, arch, and look up. And exhale, round. Inhale, arch, and exhale, round. One more here. Inhale, arch. And exhale. Come back to the table here. Press into the hands. Roll the toes under. Lift the tail and then press up and back to down though. So keep the knees pretty bent. And then bring the feet to about mount with distance. So the feet are kind of a little bit more far apart here. Bend the knees. Drop both heels over to the right. And then press the heels down towards the ground. You can keep the knees soft. Breathe into the left side line. Maybe you feel this underneath the armpit. Down to the rib cage, into the side waist, and here's the outer hip. And then back to the center, rise up onto the toes, bend the knees, the both heels drop towards the left. And press the heels down, get long to the right side body. You might need to push away a little bit more with the right hand, and then we'll come back to your center, over to the right again. Move back to center and over to the left. One more each side, back to center, but knees over to the right. And then back to center, 
Bend the knees over to the left. Just knees down. <laughs> Come back to center here. Bend the knees a lot, roll forward. It's a plank pose, draw the tail, tail under, presses the hands and build the upper back. Just look straight down in front of, um, straight down in front of your eyes, not necessarily your hands, but underneath the mat. Your eyes and knees down. And hips to heel, child's pose. Take a breath or two here. And slowly roll forward and through. Table down onto your belly. Bring your hands to either side of the mat. So fingertips come off here. The tops of the feet press down. The shoulders rise up by the ears if you're stroking your shoulders. And then squeeze the shoulders straight to the sky. So they're squeezing them back. But in this position, it's straight to the sky. So keep hugging them back, hugging them back. And then press the fingertips just a little bit. Start to draw the rear cage forward. As you start to let the sternum, the chest, reach forward and the gaze moves forward. And then release back down. We'll do a few more of these, maybe lifting a little bit more each time. Inhale, shoulders come up, shoulders roll back. Draw forward, draw forward. And then down. One more. Inhale, shoulders up and roll back. And lift, draw forward. And down, nice. You stack the hands here from the chin or the forehead to the mat and take a few, or to the back of the hands and take a few breaths. And just notice here. How's the body feeling? Bring your hands underneath the shoulders. You press up and back to down dog. Let's take a moment here, or a few moments, a few breaths here, and bend up some back of the hands. Keep the knees soft with the tail. You wag the tail and the hips a little from side to side. Pressing down, externally rotating all those lovely down dog cues that you hear all the time. And then this inhale to roll forward to plank pose. Knees down, hips to heel, child's pose. So moving through a little flow here. Inhale, all fours and arch. And exhale, up and back, down, down. Inhale, roll forward, plank. Hug the, leg, the legs towards each other. Knees down, hips to heels, child's pose. Inhale, all four. And exhale, down, down. One more, inhale, roll forward, plank. Knees down, hips to heels. Inhale, all fours. And exhale, down dog. You gotta pedaling out, one and the other. Bring the gaze to the hands and walk the feet towards the front of the mat. We're going to feel a little bit wider to start, maybe outer hip width distance. Let the knees soften with the rib cage fall towards the thighs. Maybe let the head release towards the mat. The hands just releasing down, maybe grabbing elbow to elbow, getting a little bit longer. Move through spine here. Two more breaths here. And the next inhale, bring your hands to the shins, lengthen out and look forward, draw the belly in and up. Lift the tail a little like we did in that cow pose on all fours, and then fold forward. Let's do two more of those. Inhale, lengthen, lift the tail, lift the heart, squeeze the shoulder blades together this time, and fold. 
Last one here. Inhale. Lift the tail. Lift the heart. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Hit the back bend through the spine. You can press your hands into your upper thighs and let your spine go a little longer. So think about drawing the sternum away from the body, away from the tail. And at the same time, pulling the tail back away. It's moving that way. One more breath here. Hands off on the knees and engage through the spine from all the way to stand. Bring the feet to about hip width distance. This is kind of thigh bone distance, your down, um, where your thigh bones come into your pelvis. And then press down into the heels and I just want you to pull the heels apart. So as if you're taking the backs of your legs and making them wider, spreading your sit bones a little bit wider. And as you pull apart, how you're trying to rip a hole in the mat, see if you can spin the front of the shins in. So actually it's an internal rotation of the whole thigh. The back goes out, the front goes in. At this point, you should be like, oh yeah, my legs are on. <laughs> and then find that little anterior tip. Get a little longer through the spine, and rib cage away from pelvis. So hug in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then draw the shoulders up by the ears and hug them straight back. Let's bring the hands to the hips or underneath the rib cage and hug the elbows back towards each other as we get a little bit longer. Keep holding apart with the backs of the feet, hugging in with the front of the shins. One more breath. And release all that engagement. And take a fold over the legs. Take your time here. On the next inhale, the hands come to the uh, mat or to the shins, bend the knees, and step the left foot back. Let the right foot be wide on the mat, and let the left knee come down. So we'll take the left hand off the side of the mat, so I'm on the floor. And before I go anywhere from here, curl back to his under, and then drag the back knee towards the front heel without actually moving. So it's an isometric contraction. You can see my hips pop up a little bit. And the front and inner thigh on the back leg are turned on. And let's do the right arm forward. So you're coming forward in the down ankle and coming towards the corner of the mat. And then press into that left hand and start to wrap open here so that my chest, my gaze, is looking towards the top of my mat. Really seem to slowly come back to center. Bring the hands down. You can step and switch, or if you're feeling like you know, a little bit more fire, you can hop and switch. Same action here, right knee comes down. Left foot's wide on the mat, right hand comes off of the side of the mat. And then we pause. Curl the back toes under. Hug isometrically. So back knee drags in towards the front heel. Press down into the right hand. Left arm sweeps to the corner. And then starts to wrap open. And if you're like me and you're running out of space, you can bring the hand on the head. But keep pressing into that right hand. You might even scoot it further away from you or further back, depending on what's going on for your body. But again, think chest and gaze towards the front of the mat. And slowly coming back to center. Put the hands down. Let's hop and switch again. Because why not? Bring the back knee down. This time, press into the front heel. Sweep the arms towards the sky. And slide the hips forward. So you're starting to feel a little opening to that hip flexor on the back leg. If it's too much, to drag the knee in again, turn that hip flexor back on, take one more breath. And as we exhale, let's slide this back top, pop the toes on the front foot. Just starting to feel a little sensation in the back of that right leg. And slowly sliding forward, we plant the hands down, hop switch again, or just step and switch, that's fine too. Press down to the front heel, sweep the arms to the sky, hips slide forward, drag the back knee in towards the front, so engaging all the way, like all the way through, not 
not all the way with your muscle. <laughs> Engaging through the whole practice makes what could be a very kind of gentle practice a little more challenging. And as we exhale, slide the hips back, up the toes. You might just notice right here the pattern in your body, right? You're going to have one back of the leg really tight, one hip flexor really tight, and then the other side is different. Sliding back forward, plant the hands, step back, down bow. Inhale as you look forward. Exhale, step, hop, walk, whatever works for you right now. Inhale, lengthen out. Check the feet, make sure everybody hit the distance. You can check that, it's like eight knuckles or so between the big toe mounds. Press down into the heels. Rise up here into back into a chair. So press into the heels, pull apart, hug in, get long, little anterior so a little J-Lo going on. And then imagine that you're drinking a smoothie, you like sucked in a piece of fruit through the through the straw, right? And, you're, and everything sucks in. Let's do that. It's called transverse abdominus and knees. So squeeze in. And then imagine that you're climbing one of those ropes in gym class. You have to climb and then climb one side and the other. It's getting longer through the side body. And notice here, you have one side a little bit more stuck. You turn towards you so you can see a little bit more getting taller and then taller. And now see if you can grow taller through the right side. So crawl up to the right side. Hold that, see if they have a little bit more. And then crawl up and meet with the left, hold that. And a little bit more anterior to one more breath. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back to plank. Knees down, lower to the belly. Take a back line variation here. So maybe it's cobra, shoulders up and roll back. Maybe come up to down dog. The shoulder action is the same. And then up and back to down dog. Turn the right leg back behind and bend the knee. Grab the hip open here. Push away with the right hand a little bit more. Get a little longer through the right side body. Inhale, straighten and square. And then exhale, hug the knee in, step the right foot to the right hand. Press straight down into the front heel and rise up here to a high lunge. The same action to press it straight down until the underside of the um, glutes turn on and then hugging in isometrically. Keep reaching through the back knee. And then inhale here. Use the pressing down of the front heel so you don't collapse, but get long, like on a diagonal. Then let the left hand come down or to a block or whatever your makeshift block is at home. Keep the right arm reaching forward. And as you draw forward with the right side, allow your chest to open towards the right. So getting in the spine twist variation here. Bring your right hand down. Step back. Maybe you come straight to down dog, or maybe you flow through plank. Belly down, back bend, and down dog. Reach the left leg back behind, bend the knee, wrap the hip open, press away with both hands, and notice your body. Notice the patterns. What's going on in your mind right now? What is your body doing? Inhale, straighten and square. Exhale, hug the knee and set the left foot to the left thumb. Press straight down here. Hug the feet isometrically towards each other. Reach the arms to the sky. And then inhale as you come forward. Get long again, long, long, long. Right hand comes down to a block or the ground. Left arm can stay by the ears. You wrap open. So the left arm reaching forward just helps the side body go a little longer. You might stay here too, that's fine. Press 
And inhale as we come back through center. Plant the hands at the back. Plank or down dog. Flow through if you choose. And then up and back down dog. Inhale as you look forward. Exhale, step up or walk with feet. And then you can grab onto whatever you're using for a strap and come all the way to stand. So I'm actually using a strap. When I teach from home, oftentimes I use a hand towel. Let's bring the hands back behind and clasp the strap or whatever you're using, um, just kind of like hip width distance. Find the um, chair position, so feet hit the distance, press down to the heels, pull apart, pull anterior toe. Before we go anywhere, so shoulders come up, shoulders hug straight back. This might be where you stay. Can you squeeze the elbows together a little bit more? Can you slide your hands in on the strap a little bit more? And if your hands are touching, cool, that's fine. Can you keep the shoulders up? Can you keep the shoulders back? Can you keep the back bend? Squeeze the shoulders together. Press the elbows back. Take one more breath here. And can you maintain the shoulder position as you let go of the knees through the legs and take the folds over the legs? Release the strap, or if you've got your hands, you certainly can do these things as well. I'll just take a moment here. Take your peace fingers, go between the big toe and the second toe, and then hook them around. So you take your peace fingers and hook this way. And then draw the elbows out to the side. And a little more anterior tilt. And see if you can use the engagement of the arms. Keep the knees bent. Don't strain the hamstrings for no reason. That's not the goal here. Can you press down into the heels, actually, and engage the back of the legs a little bit? Inhale, lengthen out. Release the hands down. Step back to plank. Lower chaturanga or knees down. Scoot forward. And inhale to a back bend of some sort. And exhale up and back. Down dog. Reach the right leg back behind as you inhale. Then the knee wrap the head open. This time, imagine that you are actually in yoga studio. You're trying to keep your finger behind you. So behind you would be to your left. Is it or not lined up next to you? Maybe there is. Maybe you're actually there trying to keep your neighbor. That's cool. Can you keep the foot active? Can you keep the leg active and keep pressing back, 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 so that the right side of the abdomen gets longer? And then notice, what does it feel like? What does it feel like? To have the right side of your belly stretching out like that. Inhale as we come back straight and square. Hug the knee in, set the right foot to the right thumb. Just straight down the back and heel, rise up, high lunge. And then open up here for warrior two. So the front heel intersects the back foot somewhere, arch, heel. Then like that. Press straight down into the front heel and then pull the feet towards each other. And as you do so, reach out with the arms. Maybe even hug the shoulders up by the ears first and then hug the shoulder blades straight back so they're reaching towards the wall behind you or whatever's that way. And then keep pressing against the front heel. Keep hugging the feet towards each other. Can you start to lengthen that front leg? And then reach the right arm out, we're trying to shift the hand. Right hand can come down here. Maybe the left hand comes to the hip. Maybe it reaches on a diagonal. Keep 
keep hugging the feet together. That's going to create resistance. It's not as easy to just drop to the ground. Keep like, legs engaged. One more breath. And then inhale, keep the legs straight. Put the front palm reverse. And then back down and through, plant the hands, step back, plank, maybe chaturanga, make knees down, maybe cobra or up dog, and then up and back, down dog. So the left leg back behind, bend the knee, wrap the hip open. So again, press through the heel, foot active, press through the heel, like as if you had a wall behind you, now I do. As I press through my left heel, the left abdomen gets a little bit longer, I guess. You can feel some more sensation there. Keep pressing, keep pressing. Inhale, straighten and square. Hug the knee and set the left foot to the left thumb. Press down, rise up, high lunge. And then open here, warrior two. Stay right where you are. I'm just going to turn so we can see. Press down to that front heel, hug in. Good job. Shoulders come up and straight back. And then again, keep hugging in straight in the front leg. Reach out like you're shaking hands. Left arm maybe comes to the left thigh. Right hand can come to the hip. Up and over. Notice again what's happening through the side body. What's happening in the shoulder? Does your mind say anything about it? Does your body say anything about it? Is that consistent with your pattern? Rise up here, and then cartwheel down. And the mat, like chaturanga, up dog, or cobra. And let's take it back to child, so it sticks the heels. Take a few breaths. When you're ready to do so, we'll make these down dogs. So if you'd like to come with your plank, chug around that dog, down dog, you can. Otherwise, meeting the down dog, reaching the right leg straight back, hug the knee in, set the right foot through. Press down here, rise up to a high lunge. Let's start by bringing the hands um, to the ribs or to the hips. You can grab your strap if you would like. We are going to bring our hands behind us in a moment. And then step the left foot off to the left foot. So make your stance a little wider. Let the back heel drop down. I don't love warrior one, especially virtually. So try to keep the stance as wide as you can from right to left. And then maybe you take your strap again. Maybe you interlace your fingers. Shoulders up by the ears. Hug the elbows back. Shoulder blades squeeze together. And then press into the front heel. Drag the feet asymmetrically together, and then take a fold inside that front leg. So what tends to happen is we roll the shoulders in. Can you keep the shoulders reaching back? Can you keep engaging through the legs and keep folding in? Maybe even finding a little anterior tilt here that would be a little bit more fold. So lift the booty, especially on the right side. One more. Keep that strap. You can let go, you can your hands, you can let go, both hands come down to the mat. And then turn all to the toes towards the long edge of the mat, the place that you were already uh, facing. Hands come underneath your chest now. Press the heels, the backs of your legs apart, so heels press away from each other. While you hug the front of the chin in. So activating the inner leg line. And the outer leg line, get long, take a breath to lengthen the spine, and then take a fold. 
Now, if you're kind of rounded, really think about J Lo. Look, we'll end here. We're still sending the knee to the side a little bit more. Let me take a few breaths here. Inhale as you lengthen out, flat back. Bend the right knee, shift the hips over to the right, pop both toes up, and keep the hands down here for balance. Back through center, over to the left, right toes pop up, and over through center, to the right, left toes pop up. As we come back through center here, we're gonna rotate back to the top edge of our mat to be towards our right foot. Blend the hands, step back, so maybe down dog, and then maybe floating through. Or maybe just staying down dog. Reach the right leg, uh, sorry, the left leg straight back. Hug the knee in, step the left foot through. Press down here, rise up. Pop the feet wider apart from right to left. Let that back heel drop down. If you're using a strap, grab your strap. Bringing it back behind. Shoulders come up. Shoulders hug back. Elbows hug back. And then anterior tilt on that left side and fold inside that left front leg. Keep squeezing the shoulders towards each other. Keep hugging the feet in. Pressing through the outer edge of that back foot, really and hugging that in. Keep the legs turned on to protect your joints. It's easy to hang in the back knee here. And slowly releasing the hands down. Turn towards the long edge of your mat, which will be, well, again, the way you were just facing. I just turned so that you could see. This time, let's bring our hands to our hips, hug the elbows back, maybe even if you're released at this point. I have another white pack in my leg. <laughs> Shoulders up, hold back. Maybe the hands will slide down the back. And as you fold forward, maybe your hands will come off of the back, or maybe they won't. Keep pressing through the back of the heels apart, the front of the feet hug together. Your legs are probably shaking. That's cool. You're placing the hands when you're ready to do so. They can come underneath. The mat in front of you. And then bend the left knee, shift over to the left, right toes pop up. Back through center, over to the right, left toes pop up. Center, right toes up. And then as you come back through center here, Come back to the top edge of your mat to where your left foot is. Lend hands and step back to down dog. Set the right foot to the right front of here and let the left knee come down. And so if you're on a hard surface, you could fold your mat in. You could also grab a blanket or a pillow or something off your couch. If your house is anything like mine, you have 87 blankets and pillows everywhere. We have a blanket issue in my house. Bring the left hand up, diagonally up and away from the shoulder. So like you can slide forward a little bit more and then be stacked over. And then using the strength of your left hamstring, that's the back, top back of this leg back here, squeeze your foot towards your butt. You might only come here, you might come here, that's okay. Squeeze it in as far as you can. And then inhale, reach the right arm forward, back around, see if you can grab on. I did this yesterday as a yin pose and used my kid. I was like, can you come sit right here? And she did. I just rested my foot on her for five minutes while she read. It was great. Keep opening the right side of the chest. Maybe let the belly start to turn towards the side just a little. And then back through center. Let's go to the other side. So however you want to get there is fine. 
I'm gonna slide back with my right knee on the blanket and then sit out forward. Right hand comes forward and out. And then you use the strength of that back leg to take the foot towards the butt. What you will notice from side to side is that it's different. That's cool. That has to do with the patterns of your body. This is one of those poses too where people go, yeah, I can't do that. And I say, huh, reach forward, circle around. And this is usually where they are. They just don't know. And so if you can grab a foot, maybe kick with 5% of your effort into your hand, wrap the left shoulder open, maybe the belly starts to roll towards the sky just a little. And slowly coming back to center. Slide hips back. And we'll come to um, rest on our shins. So, if you're using a block or something, you certainly can use that here. We're going to bring our knees to about hip width distance, and we'll curl the toes under and start on the left side. So, bring the left hand to the left heel. Right hand can come just to the hip, but see if you can get the shoulders to point forward. And then let's anterior tilt, find a little J Lo action. Press the hand down into the heel or to the block. See how much higher the block is than my foot? I don't have very big feet. So maybe I press my fingertips down here and a little J Lo. And then go back to where we're in chair. We'll lift the rib cage away from the back of the pelvis, right? The rib cage will sweat. We do this thing. Do that again. Crawl up away. And then press down to that left hand. Keep this position exactly as it is. And then let your hips move forward in space. So I'm not jamming my pelvis forward, I'm still in the anterior tilt. This is my back bend. Lift, lift, lift. Uh, sternum, center of the chest, lifts forward and up. Maybe the right arm comes to the sky. Take a few breaths here, what does this feel like? Right, the same action within the shoulder a bunch. Shoulder comes up, shoulder rolls back. Hand presses down. If you've done up the block, maybe you check it out with your hands on your heel. And you're gonna come out the pose the same way. So anterior tilt, butt comes back, butt comes back, butt comes back, butt comes back, just like so. And then we try side number two. Keep notice what happens right to left for you. Side number two, anterior tilt. Your cage slides away from the pelvis. Press down into the hands. Lift, 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 lift. You come here, maybe the knees come back a little. But as I come out, stay in action, butt comes back first. And if you're like, I really want to try that on both sides, I'm going to pull candle pose, you can. You do the exact same thing. Anterior tip, lift through the chest, shoulders rise up, shoulders come back, hands come down. I have super short arms, so that's part of this, but that's okay. I also have a super tight shoulder. <laughs> and then same thing when you're coming out, and to your tilt, come back. And maybe you just come sit here for a few in here, pose. Maybe you can come forward into child's pose after a few breaths. So it's something to play around with. And then once you're ready, if you're in child's pose and you want to stay there, cool, stay there. Another option for countering that back bend. <laughs> Siri keeps thinking, talking to her. Is to, I like to sit on something, so I'm going to sit on a blanket. Find a little anterior tilt, right? So activate the muscles in the lower back. Lift through the spine, then take a fold forward. Can take the folds forward a little bit more. And 
and slowly lift it back through the spine. And then because we're already seated here, let's do we'll draw the left leg in. We'll draw the right leg on top. So I like to lean back. If you have a couch or a wall behind you, you can actually lean right back into it. Bring the right foot across. So the ankle bone comes across the um, thigh bone. And then let your pelvis rock back forward. Pressing the pinky side edge of the foot, like karate chopping down. And then using the strength of my outer hip to press my knee down. Lift a little more. You might stay right here. You might take a fold. If you're jam or if you've got knee stuff going on and it's just not feeling good for you today, you can do the same thing on the back. Or if pigeon is more in jam, that's fine too. So again, maybe it's a fold forward. I really like to fold towards the front or top foot. And slowly look back through the spine. Keep the left leg in where it is, um, unless you're in pigeon, in which case you'll spin around. It doesn't matter which side you do next, but we're going to come into John Nutri A little hamstring opening, so rotating torso towards the thigh bone. Into the fold. Slowly lifting back through the spine, come over to the other side. So, right leg comes in, left foot comes across, um, unless you're doing pigeon or figure four in your back, and then karate chop with that foot. Roll forward. What's the benefit of sitting on something? It allows, it helps with the anterior tilt, which helps with mobility, which is why we like to do it here. And again, I'm using the strength of this outer hip, my hands on it, but I'm not actually pushing down. You could. But if you want to push down, I would put my hand underneath and press down and to engage. Or if you were trying to release your hip flexor here, the top of the leg, you could bring your hand to the top, press into the hand, take a few breaths there, and then that should help to release that muscle. Because muscles like to contract, they want to like to stretch. Towards that front foot, maybe even towards the knee if that's more your jam. Explore. Explore and notice what comes up. Slowly back through the spine. Right foot stays in, left leg extends out. Return toward that left leg, lengthen and fold. Slowly lifting back through the spine, and we'll pull ourselves the length of the mat if you're not already there, and slowly roll down onto your back. We have your knees in, give yourself a little squeeze. If there's any poses that you'd like to add in before a spine twist, you certainly can do so. That's a spine twist, you're going to press the knees to the ground, move the hips to the left, two to three inches, and we'll let both knees drop towards the right. So they can be staggered, they can be stacked. Whatever your body needs is totally fine. Anytime we do work in the spine, 
especially maybe the spine and the shoulders. The tendency to have beliefs about ourselves or old patterns crop up. For years I used to say I can't be back then. Not about them. And slowly coming back to center, bring the feet down, both the hips, slide them two, three inches to the right, and then both knees come towards the left. Slide twist is a really great way, really great um, spot to notice the patterns of the body. We tend to twist one way much easier than we do the other. And then once you're ready to, you can find your way back to center. Again, if there's any last minute poses you'd like to add in, you can. You can bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees go out. You could extend the legs. And just starting to allow the body to settle into your rest. Before you drift away in the mind, can you just notice it? There were any patterns, things that showed up for you in the body or in the mind, usually in their relationship to each other. Maybe there are things that you notice about yourself in our practice today. nagging thing that was hanging out at the back of the brain. Now is a great time to just make note of the fact that it exists. And know that it's something that you can come back to. And then allow the body to start to settle on the bones and the head. Once again, find the rhythm of your
breathe, you can also learn to back to your breath. More aware and scan of the body. Deepening the inhalation and exhalation. We need to add in the seeds. Once you're ready to do so, you find your way to a seated position. Bring the hands into the heart. Your practice today highlight for you the patterns that you would like to let go of. The sanskaras, the things that get in the way of your own growth, your own joy, your own peace. May you embrace the new patterns that you create as you continue to grow. That's awesome.